All right, so what we're looking at here is the full moon chart for 11 degrees of Capricorn, which will be on July the uh, 3rd. And it'll be at 1138 GMT, that's Greenwich Mean Time. So if you're ever wondering what the standard time is for astrology, it is Greenwich Mean, uh, mean Time. So that makes it about 6.38 p.m., I think so. I, have to, I haven't written up my full report on it yet. I'll confirm here in just a second. I'm gonna make sure. Yeah, so the full moon is actually at 7.39 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it's not in the p.m., it's in the All right, so here's what this means. In the most basic form, anytime we have a full moon, it is when the, the moon is exactly opposite the sun. Currently, the sun is in Cancer. Um, at that time, it will be at 11 degrees of Cancer. It will be conjunct Mercury within a three degree orb. So down here, um, when the sun is conjunct Mercury, it brings a lot of extra illumination to the area um, of the zodiac sign and then natally for your own personal chart. Now, this is going to shine a light on all things that have to do with mothering, your emotions, your subconscious mind, um, your heart, your um, relationship to kids if you have kids and your home, also your drive for security and nourishment, all right? Um, when Capricorn or the moon is in Capricorn, it brings with it a need for a plan and a sense of success. It wants a plan to move towards something to achieve its goals. It has high level standards. So these two are always functioning together. Um, when we get our full moon in Capricorn every year during cancer season, we have a full moon in Capricorn every time this year. Now, what's also happening at this time is that Neptune will have just stationed retrograde at 27 degrees of Pisces. We've now got Saturn uh, retrograde at seven degrees of Pisces. We've still got Chiron moving direct. We've got a little bit longer till the station's retrograde. Um, and, you know, we've got Uranus moving, like it's still moving. It's going to station here shortly, though, in the next month and a half. What we also need to look at, though, is our Venus and our Mars, which are tracking still really close together. Um, in the middle degrees of Leo, right here with Black Moon Lilith, um, because only a couple weeks after that, we have the Venus retrograde, as well as the nodal access moving into Aries. So there's a lot happening in July, and I'm going to do a whole um, channel like post on that, but there is a lot happening astrologically in July. So much change and movement and opportunity and this Capricorn full moon is really um, highlighting exactly what we need to see, what we need to see and communicate um, in order to achieve our goals. So what this is going to bring for most people is it's going to highlight the concept of our work, um, what kind of career we want to have, how we might want to change our career, how we might want to accelerate our career goals, get more clear, have a better plan execute something, launch something. Um, it's really bringing with it a sense of, of success and purpose when there is a plan. Um, at this time, Jupiter will also be at nine degrees of Taurus. So, um, you know, we're, we're really starting to see Jupiter get into these higher levels of where it's going. Now, when we look at the nodal axis, which are the uh, shadows of the moon, they are now at zero degrees of Taurus and Scorpio. What does that mean? It means that we have about three weeks of closing out that whole narrative that took 20 years to come into fruition and it took the last 18 months to two years to close out. So um, this has a lot to do with like, are we building like a final attempt? Like, are we building simple, sustainable um, practices that lead us towards long-term success and sustainability like that is the north node in taurus with a capricorn capricorn moon for sure um success and sustainability are like at the top of the list is it going to help me make the money i need to make 
This is very important, all right? Is it lining up with my values? Is it simple? Do I wanna do this work anymore? If I don't, how does that line up with my values, right? And with Jupiter in here at nine degrees um, in a trine, right? So if you see Jupiter at nine degrees and then the 11 degree Capricorn moon, this trine is really asking us um, to, to really work in a harmonious way towards materializing something, like putting some earth behind it, you know, like really, really creating um, strategies and long-term plans for success. They're working together in that way. The other thing that's interesting is that, you know, we, we've got um, Neptune retrograde, we've got Pluto retrograde, is that Neptune at 27 degrees of Pisces is in a sextile to Pluto retrograde at 29 degrees of Capricorn. Why the Capricorn and um, the Cancer full moon situation this time every year always matters so much. And it also always highlights the 4th of July, which is America's technical birthday, is that it is America's birthday, right? Like it is the solar return for America. And with our Pluto return in here, it is like big time shining a light on all things American centric. American values, you know, its traditions, um, what is important to it. That's why we always see like the red, white, and blue, uh, the eagle. <laughs> I was at Walmart this morning. I had to get my kid um, some new swim shorts. And um, that's where I always go and get them. They, they like all of the different patterns and stuff. And it was so funny because like Budweiser was like an aesthetic. Like it was an actual aesthetic. However, this year... Um, a lot of the people that would typically be like, we're Budweiser people are now changing their values because Budweiser, Anheuser-Busch is tied to Bud Light and Bud Light um, had a commercial this past year with a transgender woman um, drinking Bud Light and, and promoting Bud Light. And so a lot of really, really like racist, homophobic conservatives have started doing crazy things to rebel against Bud Light. And so it's just an interesting way of like looking at how Uranus and Taurus is bringing changes um, to old traditions and, um, you know, like it, it, America is changing. The values are changing. We've only got another year and a half of um, Pluto retrograding back into Capricorn as of March of next year, we'll be fully in Pluto and Aquarius. So we're like getting this review. We're like getting this looking back. Um, before we really like trudge forward into this this new era of what what is American. And um, it'll, be, it'll definitely be very interesting as we get into Pluto in Aquarius, which is the last time that happened was the American Revolution, right? So not to go too far down that path, I can talk about that somewhere else. Um, but I do want to share that wherever 11 degrees of Capricorn is in your chart, there is some sort of completion that began for you um, around December, like the, um, you know, like the middle part of December that would be powerful for you, you know, or not December, sorry, January, that would be powerful for you. And something coming to completion, something that came up for you during that time that now needs to be celebrated, released, and moved towards fully. Um, in the other way, wherever the 11 degrees of cancer is, is where the sun and mercury are, is really shining a light on things you need to speak about, talk about, feel about, um, and like move towards, right? Like really moving towards this sense of what is our family? What is our home? What is our values? What is security? What does food and wellness and nutrition look like for me, right? How do I feel in my body? How do I want to make um, and take steps towards like healing my nutrition, healing my body, um, healing my endocrine system, things like that um, always come up with um, cancer season, because right after cancer season, we start to get into, um, you know, our Leo and our Virgo season, which really ask us to start to pay attention to how we feel, how we show up, how we're seen, especially Virgo season. Um, that's where we get our, we get an opportunity to get our lives together every year, you know, harvest season, organized and things like that. But with cancer season, it's very much about your home. It's about the real estate market. Um, it has to do particularly with um, the womb. And last year, this time is when we lost Roe v. Wade. So like with Black Moon Lilith in there. So this was a big time last year. 
um, that really affected particularly female identified folks and um, birthing people. And then also last year when Black Moon Lilith was in cancer was also when we had the formula crisis here in America. And um, a lot of people could not feed their babies because there was very, very low supplies of um, baby formula. So really shine a light on particularly um, female, female identified folks. And I've been seeing this a lot, especially as Venus and Mars are so close together in Leo. There's been a lot of um, back and forth about, well, what is feminine and what is masculine and pronouns and this and that. And um, it, it is going to be an interesting time in that way. Um, and for any of you that are interested, like I'm a hundred percent pro supporting people, how they identify and that is sovereignty at its most basic um, stance and right is honor people the way that they want to be honored. Um, if their name is a name that is other than what was on their birth certificate, honor them by going by the name they want to be known by, by their pronouns. Um, you know, like it's doesn't, it doesn't matter how we feel about somebody else's lives. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that we respect people in the way in which they want to be respected um, because it goes back and forth, right? Be nice or say nothing at all in the words of Thumper. So, okay. I hope that this is helpful for you guys and um, that you have a happy full moon in Capricorn. My ritual suggestion to you is to really sit down and talk, especially with the sun in a conjunction of Mercury. You need to talk about your feelings. You need to talk about um, your sense of balance between work and home, your sense between productivity and rest. Um, you need to talk about it. And from that conversation, maybe record yourself while you're talking, turn it into a list of, of tasks that you actually want to complete, right? Like what is going to help you streamline? What is going to help you move towards success and achievement, whether that is in your career or where you live or both, but it's going to shine a light on those two things, especially. And that is, um, that is the, the, the paradox of home and work. Okay. All right. I hope this was helpful. Happy full moon. And I will see you guys later. Okay.